was 10 p.m. I was alone in my car in an empty parking lot. I had my hands wrapped around my throat, squeezing as hard as I could. I was desperate. I just wanted the painful emotions to stop. And I've never been so determined to harm myself. My wife and new baby were at home asleep. And my wife had no idea where I was. My body felt tight, my breath was short, and tears were streaming down my face. I felt overwhelmed, I felt scared, and I felt angry. But most of all, I felt ashamed, stupid, and weak. Most of my life, I can remember waves of darker emotions coming over me. I knew this pain as feeling disposable. From the ages of 3 to 23, I had been to 8 different schools in 7 different cities and 3 different countries. From Tehran, Iran, to Birmingham, Alabama, to Scarborough, Ontario, just to name a few. And each time there was a change, I remember feeling uprooted, as if the whole process started all over again. And throughout the years, I learned different ways to prove to myself and everyone around me that I wasn't disposable, that I did matter. In grade school, I learned I could mask my pain by making others laugh. I was a class clown. In high school, I turned my focus to athletics. In university and medical school, it was academics, and I thought I found my perfect drug, achievement. Doing more and being recognized for it was my security blanket. When I achieved more, I got high, and it temporarily soothed my pain. When I achieved, it meant I could hide my distress, and you got to see the polished version of me. But above all, I thought the more I achieved, the greater my chances of feeling valued, and the quicker my darker vibes would dissipate. Months before that night in my car, this line of thinking was being challenged. I'd given up my general practice and majority of my family's income with it. I started a new business and became a first-time parent. And perhaps for the first time in my life, I couldn't figure out how to achieve fast enough to soothe my pain. During that time, I also became keenly aware of how our society glorifies positive vibes only. This mantra seems to be posted everywhere. It's so enticing and presumably the best way to live. But positive vibes only is saying, if we don't feel positive, then we're no longer part of the club, and we must do everything in our power to return to positive feelings as soon as possible. So there's definitely no room for feeling ashamed, stupid, and weak. So as I sat there in my car, I vividly remember the violent discourse and disenchanted feelings that coursed through me. I remember thinking, I should have healed my pain by now. I thought if I worked hard enough on myself and for others, I'd be free from this darkness I knew so well. So as this deep, familiar pain resurfaced, I felt like a failure. Despite reading all the right books, doing all the right things and stacking up all the right degrees. It was painfully obvious in that moment that I had to take my own medicine in a deeper way than ever before. You see, pain is that relationship that walks right into your front door uninvited. It'll go through your closet, it'll go through your fridge, it'll make itself comfortable on your couch, eat all your snacks, and hogs the remote control. You can change your locks as many times as you want, but somehow pain finds the key back in. Here's the deal. Sustainable peace and safety doesn't come from locking pain out. It comes from understanding it in a much different way. I needed to build a whole new relationship with my emotional challenges. I need to learn how to connect to my pain before I try to correct my pain. I needed to see my pain as a demanding teacher and not my enemy. This meant I had to let my pain in instead of blocking it out. 
I had to listen to it instead of silencing it. I had to sit still with it instead of running away from it. Because pain knows better than just to walk away before we have learned what we are meant to learn. Pain places challenges before us so we develop a deeper understanding of who we are, our family, our community, and the world. Pain is asking us to deconstruct the positive vibes only mantra and to rebuild an all vibes welcome relationship with ourselves. A relationship like this starts by accepting one simple truth. As humans, we are in a lifelong relationship with emotional challenges. They will never simply go away. They may come and go and have their seasons, but for us to grow, we must welcome in and make meaning of all our lives. So how do we do this? What is at the core of all vibes welcome? Self-compassion. Self-compassion means offering yourself compassion in moments of perceived failure, general suffering, or perceived inadequacies. And I know, self-compassion gets some eye rolls. It can sound pretty fluffy. Many of you in this room may think that self-compassion is a type of feel-good message we offer one another when we don't have any real evidence or science to support us through the pain. I thought this too for years as I try to fight my way through the pain. But we all need self-compassion. It is the friend emotional pain keeps crying out for. And according to a rich and growing body of scientific data, it is one of the most robust tools we can develop from a psychological and neurological level. Self-compassion has the ability to activate our innate brain's response to trauma in a much deeper and personally meaningful way. Self-compassion has the power to create an internal sense of safety so that we are both vulnerable to our experiences and also accountable to our well-being. So how do we do this? How do we cultivate self-compassion? It starts with a conversation. Self-compassionate conversations can take on many different forms and go many layers deep. But that night, in my car, amidst the tears, chaotic thoughts, and dis disenchanted feelings, three questions rose above all that noise. Though I refined these questions over the years, they're the same three questions I asked myself that night and I continue to ask myself to this day every time I'm hurt. The first question I asked myself was, how would I approach a loved one in the same situation? I imagined my sister in that situation. What if my best friend was sitting next to me grabbing his throat? What did I say to my patient just earlier that week who was contemplating suicide? None of my answers included violence or dismissal. All of my answers included connection, non-judgment, a place for imperfection, and a space for all their vibes. In that moment, I recognized that my pain wanted my friendship. My pain was asking me to have the courage to have compassion for myself. I recognized I was more deficient in loving myself than I'm desperate for you to love me. I'm more deficient in accepting and welcoming all my vibes than I'm desperate for positive vibes only. We often do more and try more patience and compassion for the people we care about than we do ourselves. But your pain wants your friendship too. And we can do this when we learn to connect to our pain before we correct our pain. The second question I asked myself was, what is one step I can take towards supporting myself? I knew I couldn't solve all my problems in that one moment in the car. So I asked myself to focus on a baby step, a micro step. My one step was a crucial one. Stop harming yourself. 
So I stayed focused on that. I wasn't asking myself to solve all my problems. I was asking myself not to add to my problems. And not harming myself was the most compassionate thing I could think of doing in that one moment. Now I know how tempting it is to wish away all your pain, to want it gone instantaneously. But what I've learned is that sustainable health comes in time. When we learn to take one step towards supporting ourselves, we're creating the first ripple to sustainable health. When we learn to honor the micro moments in our individual journeys, we're giving power to the building blocks for macro changes in our lives. The third question I asked myself was, how can I tell the story of my pain differently? My story of being disposable continued to exist because I only tried to dispose of my pain. I had never considered listening to my pain so that I can drive more love towards myself. So that night, as I laid in bed next to my sleeping wife, I was, par I was far from perfect. I was shattered and I was scared. But I knew by being home, safe, I had listened more carefully to the story my pain was telling me and offered the compassion for what I was hearing. When we place an emphasis on recovery and repairing our strained relationship with ourselves, we no longer have to worry about perfecting ourselves. Our challenge, therefore, is not which vibes are good or which vibes are bad, but how can we welcome in self-compassion for an opportunity for transformation? Self-compassion is the catalyst to change the story of our pain, and so we can honor the parts of us that we've neglected. These questions help me honor my struggle and all my vibes. What would change if you embraced all your vibes? What would change if we welcomed in all vibes into our homes, into our schools, into our workplaces, and into our communities? Pain is asking us to sit up and pay attention. And that is why we must not dismiss nor judge its calling. Pain shines a spotlight onto the pieces in us that we often keep in the dark neglect or reject. And that is exactly why it has the power to instruct and enlighten us. Emotional challenges may be destructive, but they're also evolutionary. And that is exactly why they have the power to transform us. In a society where we chase happiness and display filtered images of ourselves and our lives, there's seemingly very little room for imperfection. But the dark times live amongst all of us, and we can't just hashtag and swipe our pain away. We must honor pain as our great teacher and a pathway to newfound insights and strengths. Let's honor the dark so we may revel in our light. Because when we create a space for our whole selves, we create a home for our best selves. All Vibes Welcome teaches us the art and the science of emotional transformation. It teaches us to connect to our pain before we correct our pain. Thank you for all your time and all your vibes. <laughs>